Right now, all new here at 530 on WHAS 11. We are updating the big story we've been covering all day. The three defendants in the Crystal Rogers murder case were back in Nelson County in a courthouse today. The Bardstown mother of five, of course, was reported missing the 4th of July weekend back in 2015. She's been presumed dead for nearly nine years. Now, there were several motions on the docket today, and all of them were pushed back to be talked about in June. Brooks Houck and Steve Lawson were in the courtroom. Joseph Lawson attended by video. Special Prosecutor Shane Young asked the judge for eight weeks to review the defendant's motions, with the defense getting two weeks afterwards for rebuttal. The motions were discussed are the defense's objections to the three trials being combined, something the prosecutor wants to see happen. Joseph Lawson wants the names of the expert witnesses disclosed. Steve Lawson wants his charges dismissed based on claims of immunity. And all three want a change of venue that is something, though, the prosecutor agreed with in court today. The venue should be changed. Um, I've talked to counsel. If I can, Judge, if I can tell you where we're at on it. I've talked to defense counsel. We're all three, well, not all three, but all three parties are going to get together and talk and then make a proposal to Your Honor if we can come to an agreement. And if not, um, then we'll just let Your Honor tell us where to be in February of 25, and we'll be there. Now, all the parties are expected to be in court to talk about the change of venue possibility on May 1st, but the rest of the motions again will be argued on June 13th. Joining me live now here in the studio is Louisville attorney Mick, uh, Nick Mudd of the Mudd Legal Group. And, you know, we've asked Nick in many times now as he breaks down the Crystal Rogers case in a way that we see the big picture through all of these motions. So, Nick, first of all, the uh, prosecutor in the defense now agreeing it should be moved out of Bardstown. How significant is that point? I I think we called that one, Doug. You and I both knew. We talked about it before. Uh, there is no way they're going to get a fair trial in Bardstown at all. Too many people know too much about it. You know, it's all over the media. It's constantly discussed there. It's something on the mind of the citizens. Um, but, I, you know, I question, can they get a fair trial in the state of Kentucky? So, so the two locations that have been talked about are, would be Owensboro, Western Kentucky, not too far from Louisville, Boyd counties in Eastern Kentucky. Um, you know, I don't know why those uh, cities were picked, but maybe the, it's the facilities? I think the makeup of the juries were very similar to the ones in Nelson County. The populace is very similar. Um, but the question is, is, you know, how much are those people in those counties swayed? I mean, this, this is a case that has nationwide attention, but certainly it's gripped Kentucky. It's the biggest case in Kentucky in several years. Something that Brian Butler put in a response to a motion back on March 15th, caught my eye. I want to bring it up on the screen for our viewers. I'll read exactly what he wrote, Nick. I'd like your opinion on this. It says the Commonwealth lacks proof that Ms. Rogers is deceased. If Ms. Rogers is deceased, the Commonwealth can do no more than guess at who killed her, how she died, why she died, and where she died. There is no crime scene, murder weapon, or realistic motive for the alleged crime. Ms. Rogers' body has never been found. Now that's Brian Butler, who is defending Brooks Houck in this. You know, it's believed that all the evidence has been turned over to these attorneys by now. Is that the case? And is Brian Butler making that statement out of some kind of knowledge he has? Well, my understanding, all of it has been turned over, at least the, the vast majority of it. And, you know, we've discussed before the fact that we would believe there would be some sort of strong physical evidence or forensic evidence. This statement from Mr. Butler, who I assume has reviewed it, Brian Butler is one of the best lawyers in the state of Kentucky. He's one of the best lawyers in the country. And I, I, I'm guaranteed he's gone through it meticulously. And for him to write that starts to beg the question of what do they really have? What are they relying on? Are they only relying on the statements of the Lawsons? So after this lengthy investigation and all of the searches we've seen happen in Nelson County, what do you think he's telling us there clearly? Well, he's saying we don't have a crime scene, correct? We don't have a murder weapon, correct? And we don't have a motive. Um, now, I think some could speculate about the motive, but he's reviewed the evidence and he's stating that to the court as an officer of the court. So for that not to be there starts to ask the question of what evidence do they have against this individual? You do think he's stating that as a fact then, not just throwing it out there? Uh, certainly he's an attorney and he's doing his best <laughs> to defend his client. So my other question to you then, can you get a conviction if you don't have the type of evidence he's detailing, if you don't have any evidence of remains or a body? It's possible, but I've read the motion, Doug, and looking through it, if their whole case falls on the Lawsons, I think the prosecution's got some big trouble. About the case of uh, Steve Lawson claiming immunity, that came up big time today. His yes. attorney said, I was there every time he was 
offered immunity, guaranteed immunity for his testimony. Uh, how does that factor in this for Steve Lawson? Could he actually get, get out of this case with I this think there, argument? There's a possibility of that. Certainly that's a hearing that's going to have to be brought in front of Judge Sims. I think it's one of the motions that was filed. Um, but I think looking at a lot of the clips, I've read through a lot of them um, that were made during the interrogation. And it seems to me he may have a very strong claim that he does have immunity on this case and can't be prosecuted. All right, so we'll look to May 1st to see if they agree on where this uh, trial could be held. Yes, All right, sir. thank you, Nick Muggan, for you. coming in again. We appreciate it. See you down the road. Let's check in with Kyle Lee.